Okay, um, so I started here. My name is Sarah Kai. Um, I am、uh, currently a S student taking this class of、um, pattern recognition, EEL sixty eight two five at the University of Florida. Um, as a part of the final project, I'm going to present the work I have done on this project. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it now. Okay. So here is the presentation I have. The goal of this project is to use a real life example or、um, something to actually apply the knowledge we have learned throughout the class,、um, the the ability to use the programming language on the practical problems, utilizing the MATLAB classification toolbox in this case to realize a neural network classifier. And also、um, be able to do programming language to solve simple problem like logistic regression.、Um, at the end of this, I'm going to compare the two method I have chosen, which is the、um, neural network classifier and logistic regression classifier. So, introduction for the problem:、um, the target of this project is breast cancer. Breast cancer, as we know it, is the most common cancer among women in the U.S. except for skin cancer. But it is the number one cause of death、um, among all type of cancers. The early detection has been proven to be really effective in、um, prolong the patient's life and help them to gain the proper treatment so they don't get worse.、Um, however, the process for the、uh, Um, the early diagnostics and the prevention is subjective to the time you have and the specialty available, because not all the time that you're gonna get the specialist to do、um, the checking. So that's why the machine learning can help this process and minimize the time and effort and money involved in helping more people to achieve the same、um, pre-diagnostics. Okay. So the way to do it is to actually getting a suspected tumor tissue from the breast and using the biopsy, a thin needle is injected, and some tissues were taken out, and then they got put onto a slide. The slide is thin, so it shows difference between different type of cells,、um, and and then they take pictures on microscope. So the picture is showing here, and you can see. This is the contrast between a B9 cancer tumor and a malignant cancer tissue. So there's a virtually difference. And how do we translate into features that can be used for classification?、Um, this is already done, and it's a famous case、uh, from the Wisconsin Cancer Database. And、um, the features are extracted. There are nine features. So ignore the first one because it's the instance ID. The data extracted including ten different attributes, and the attributes two to ten are the characteristics of those、um, slide tumor cells that you saw in the previous slide, and、uh, the class is already defined. Two is for benign, and four is for mal malignant diagnostics. And because the class is already defined, this is the supervised learning, because we know what the correct answer is, and we don't need to guess. So the approach for this problem is given here. So first we do data analysis. We find out what the、uh, data is, looks like, and if it's suitable for the classification test we wanted to do. And then we divide the data. For example, we divide it into training sets and test sets.、Um, and then we can use those data to do our model fitting. The model is chosen to be either logistic regression and neural network models. For the logistic ones, we calculate the weight factors and then we test the accuracy. For the neural network, we do the、um, training for the network. And then we do a validation. Sorry, this should be um. Hold up.
this is just a regular validation. It's not cross validation. And at the end, we compare the percentage of um, errors and the ROC curves area, um, those values between those two different methods to see which one's better and which one's worse for the special case. So the data set is prepared. There are 1699 test setups, and it's the uh, the correct formatting needs to be ensured, and um, we did uh, a formatting for MATLAB using the Excel kind of um, Excel format, and also we did um, ARF for Weka. Weka helps us to to do the uh, the data spreading graph. You will see later. The missing data points, there are 19 attributes that's actually missing. So we just use the median for those attributes to replace those missing values. And the correct correlation metrics we have calculated from the entire data set shows a positive correlation between the features, all less than one, and um, about values about 0 0.5. So that shows there is some correlation, but there are not repetition on the uh, features. They all have their like unique values of contributing to the actual outcome. And then we look at the p-values for all different features to see if there is a significant correlation between the features and the outcome. And they're all less than 0 0.05. Actually, they're really close to 0. So each one provides some unique information to give us the uh, conclusion. So data spreading. Is showing here and you can see that they have a nice um, clustering on for each features dividing the classes the class for the blue one is representing the uh, benign tumor cells and the red one is representing the malignant so the classification approach we have said we use the linear discriminant oh linear regression I'm sorry This is easy to understand, and uh, the solution is simple. It's the linear uh, wave factors that you will put in there and then transfer to signal wave function that become nonlinear, but still the, uh, um, the hypothesis function is linear. So this is good for high dimensionality modeling, and also we use neural network. Neural network has been applied to so many different things. It's really easy to adapt to all kinds of problems and it's especially good for complicated logic problems. Okay. The next slide is, okay, so talking about logistic regression, the hypothesis function is a uh, sigmoid function of a hypothesis of omega t times x. And the signal function is defined as a tang um, hypothesis. No. It's defined as 1 over 1 plus exponential to the variable. The cost function um, <coughs> is defined here. It's a sum over all possible um, uh, samples and then looking at the overall cost divided by, divided by number of samples. M is number of samples, and we have one y equals to one and y equals to zero condition, and so the outcome is binary. And depending on the y values, this could be simplified greatly. If you have y equals to zero, this term will be canceled out, and what is left is the one over y. And you flip it over, then that's gonna be your um uh, one minus. 0 and that will be only this term has left and if you have y equals to 1 this will be cancelled out because 0 times the log function is 0 and this will be left to be negative log of uh, hypothesis function <coughs> okay so now talking about the implementation in the MATLAB we um, have got the data already but um, the data needs to be separated into training set and test set. First, we use the training set to get the weak factor. The learning rate is defined as 0 0.1. The iterations is um, 10,000. 
and we use the gradient descent method for、um, logistic regression. Then we use the test set, which have been left is the two third. Uh, one third of the total amount of samples we got, and we use the holdoff validation. Afterwards, we calculate the error percentage. The implementation method and is gradient descendant. This is actually the mean. This is deduced by the mean square, least mean squares, and is the derivative of the uh, uh, cost function for um for the weight factor. Okay, the result is showing to have a really low error percentage, one point seven two, and we saw the type one error is zero point four five percent, and the type two error is one point two eight. Um, this is a really good performance, and this can also be proven from the ROC graph. The graph has really sharp, um, a really really fast um transition, and the ROC curve area is. Point nine eight two four, which is good. The neural network methods. Okay, so we have the artificial、um, neural network defined as a net with inputs, which is our features, different inputs, all nine, and then our output is the、uh, the class that we define. Is either malignant or benign. That's the class. And in between, we have hidden layers, and it's those hidden layers that helps us to accomplish complicated、um, relationship between the input and output. Okay. The this is actually done in MATLAB using Simulink. Simulink、um, is really convenient because you can. Just input the data, define the nodes you want, and、uh, then it's going to automatically run the、uh, run the program. Okay, so the skewed conjugate gradient back propagation method is used to train the algorithm for parameter estimation. The weights are adjusted in between each layers. Um, to actually reducing the discrepancy between the output and the input, the numbers of hidden neurons was chosen to be ten and twenty for per performance comparison. So right here, I'm showing a flowchart for the ten、uh, neuron、um, hidden layer neuron nodes. So the input has nine inputs. The hidden layers are chosen to be ten layers. And the output layer is two because it's either malignant or benign. So, and then based on the probability of those two, you determine what the output is. So, results. We just simply look at the percentage of errors.、Um, for ten hidden neurons, it actually reached a low of one point four two percent of errors, and the twenty has a significant higher amount of errors, five point seven. So we can we can tell from here that the、uh, neural network really depends on how much hidden layers you define, and we can see that for the twenty hidden neurons, probably the the layers are too much for this、um, particular application,、um, because if we have too much of the、uh, hidden layers, it actually would.、Um, Uh, require a lot more data to train those layers, and if there's not enough, then the new, the correlation will not be、uh, um trained well, and the error of percentage is showing high on all of those um <clears throat> results. The ROC curves also indicates the same kind of information for the hidden neurons. We can see that it goes really fast, and then um. Have a smaller, so higher, higher amount of、uh, um, area on their curve, and for the twenty hidden neuron、um, example, it has less amount of area. So the discussion is the result and discussion is that both methods shows great performance、um, with as low as one point four two percent of、uh, error.、Um, On the neural network application, <clears throat>、oh. 
And also we know that there's some too much hidden neurons actually cause a complication that will affect the performance. In the reference and the resource. Okay, that's it. Thank you.